What's going on, Low Gang? Welcome back. Today we have an incredibly exciting episode because, surprise, surprise, we're gonna make Moto Moto even faster. Now, if you've been following along with the build, you know that we got the full Amazon setup. So Amazon battery, Amazon motor, Amazon controller, Amazon everything. And I'll have links to all of this down in the description. The one thing that isn't going great is this controller. Everything else is working excellently, but believe it or not, uh, a like $30 square wave controller that is this big doesn't actually work that well. This is a square wave controller uh, and it's very touchy on the throttle. So the first like two to 5% of your throttle tries to throw you off the back of the bike. And today we're gonna try to fix that. Also, this only flows about 100 amps peak, which is, you know, it's decent. It gets the bike going like 37, I think was our last top speed. But the new controller, that we're gonna be putting on today will flow 200 amps, twice the power. Now, if you're into modified Razor dirt bikes or like RSF 650s or anything like that, you're probably familiar with Electro & Co. They actually sell the controller from their Ultimate Razor kit, totally separate from the rest of the stuff. So hypothetically, I should be able to use this Kelly controller. It is a KVD controller with Electro & Co's pre-mounted tune on there. Plug it in and it'll help a lot with our throttle control and it'll flow a ton more power. Who does doesn't want more power, that's awesome. We also have a new seat, which uh, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna fit. I'm not sure why I bought it. And in preparation for all the new speed and power, we got brand new goggles. There's not much more to it. Uh, I'm going to try my best to use these quick disconnects that Electro & Co sent along with the Kelly controller. But if you know me, you know I don't know anything about wiring. So it's gonna be a little bit confusing uh, to wire everything up correctly and not get it all wrong. Anyway, that's about it. I'm gonna get started and hopefully we'll have this thing mounted up in no time. Okay, uh, it's been a few days. I've done a lot of troubleshooting on the internet and I think maybe, maybe I have it figured out. I haven't turned it on yet. I want to do that on camera. Here's what I think is happening. I had not hooked up external power to the controller itself, which I thought would just happen when you like hooked up the battery, but apparently that's kind of dangerous. So I hope I didn't make the controller explode. What I have here is running off of the positive terminal. We go down to this uh, pre-charge resistor that runs up and through the key switch, then runs all the way back down to this purple wire, and that connects to the pink wire over here, which is the power for the controller. Now, the pre-charge resistor part is kind of confusing to me, so I'm not even gonna try to explain it, and I do think I probably hooked this up wrong, but what better way to test it than turning it on and hoping nothing breaks? Okay, first, turn it on, then turn it on. I thought I heard something. It's beeping. Okay, uh, I think I may have identified what's going on. I think I may have put in this uh, pre-charge resistor maybe wrong. What that beeping is, is it trying to identify what motor is in there. And when you buy this controller from Electro & Co, he preloads the tunes on there. So it should be able to identify this MY1020 motor, no problem. It's a really common motor and he specifically has a tune on it for this motor. Now, I made the mistake of touching 
this. It's really hot. So I think a lot of current is flowing through this. I'm sure if you know anything about electronics, um, this entire video is pretty tough to watch. I totally understand. I get it. But I read somewhere online that uh, their controller was having trouble identifying the motor because it wasn't getting full voltage to the power pin, pin number seven that we were just talking about. Having a resistor in there probably isn't helping it get full voltage. So I'm just gonna kind of daintily remove this and then I'm just gonna uh, twist the wires together uh, and hope that this works. Here's a moment of truth, okay? This is off. I'm gonna turn it on, on. That's a good sign. Okay, just for good measure, I'm going to uh, turn this all the way off and one more time, all the way back on. No beeping, everything's on. Let's see if it works. Oh boy, I'm nervous. Yes, dude! Holy crap, dude. Okay, I'm gonna see if... Okay. Reverse doesn't work, but that's okay. Honestly, I can't quite even remember if I hooked up reverse. I don't care, look at it. It's working, I'm so excited, oh my God. Now, I just don't have the ground hooked up to this. So once I do that, hopefully uh, we will get an actual voltage reading. And the only other thing I am concerned about is that we don't have a fuse in between the battery and the controller itself. Because the controller will pull 200 amps peak, which is a lot of amps. The battery can only supply 100 amps for like five seconds, and then its continuous output is 50 amps. The continuous draw of this controller is like 75 maybe? So this controller will be trying to pull more amps than this battery provides. However, this does have a BMS in it, a battery management system. So for now, until I can get my hands on a 100 or 110 amp fuse, I'm just gonna kind of lean on the BMS and hope that it doesn't uh, overdraw this battery and pull too much current from it and mess it up. Okay, now that all of the wiring is done, and at least it's moving. We gotta test ride this. And the only way to test ride it is to clean up the wiring and put it all back together. I'm also gonna make a little bit of an enclosure for the controller, cause we're in Seattle and I don't want uh, the controller getting wet and shorting or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I would just feel better if it had its own enclosure. So I'm gonna make that uh, out of this ABS plastic. Anyway, enough talking, let's get down to it. It's a 360 camera, which is kind of cool. I can zoom out, I can zoom in. You can even see my face. Okay, let's take this for a test ride. Uh, I've been uh, rocking with this controller now for about a week, but I was in London, and so obviously did not have Moto Moto with me. Let's go down our little secret passage. Oh my God, into the woods. And let's see how this new controller does versus the old one. God, already lost a chain. And I guess that is a good way to introduce this controller. It is 
so much faster. Okay, so it is important to note, as we set off here, that we are stuck in mode three. Now, as a friend of mine uh, pointed out, that's much better than being stuck in mode one, but it also gives us uh, a way to test the improved throttle modulation. As always being in mode three means the throttle is gonna be literally as sensitive as it can possibly get. Holy shit. Hi there. Oh God, I'm causing a ruckus. I, I thought this was gonna be like a quiet vehicle that I could kind of sneak around on. Everyone's staring at me, man. Why is everyone staring at me? Even in mode three, the throttle modulation coming up from a stop is so much better. So it's still sensitive, but you can see I can smoothly take off without dying. On the old controller, it was like the second you would touch the throttle, it really felt like it was gonna uh, try to throw you off the back of the bike. Now, obviously I have the power to do a power wheelie if I want. It's just so much more controlled and so much easier not to uh, whiskey throttle off the back of the bike. So regarding power and speed, which is, I know what a lot of people are probably curious about. Same battery, same throttle, same everything. It's noticeably more powerful, especially in the mid range. It has all of the down low, uh, but then a bunch extra kind of in the mid range and top end, which is awesome. I mean, that's what you want with a little thing like this. Like you want some low down torque, but you also want to be able to cruise at like 20 miles an hour and then hit the throttle and keep accelerating. That wasn't quite the case with the old controller. With this new controller, it definitely is. I also uh, went from an 11 tooth sprocket in the front to a 13 tooth. So that technically brings down the torque a tiny bit, but it gives us a lot more top end in the middle range of the bike's power band is so much better. It's so much meatier. I would highly suggest it, even if you're doing wheelies, like a 13 tooth is absolutely worth it. Oh my god. Okay, let's go down this. Why not? Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was spooky. Now, regarding top speed, uh, we're still at a little over 40 miles an hour, which is great. That is way faster than I really want to go on this bike. And since we're still at a 13 tooth front rather than like a 14 or a 15, it's definitely geared for torque. Like it can still climb and with the extra power that this controller is flowing, I would not want any more. All right, I know this is wet here, but let's do a little. Oh no. Oh my God, second time. Now for all you wheelie heads out there, uh, I will say it gives a lot more uh, wheelie power and way more controllability, which is like the most important part. With the old controller, yeah, you could you could pop the front end up, but this will do it in a way more controlled way, even stuck on mode three. And you can actually pop power wheelies at a much higher speed. Like with the other controller, it just didn't flow enough amps uh, to lift the front wheel after maybe, I don't know, 20 miles an hour. With this controller, all you gotta do is kind of yank back and throttle it. It's scary, man, but like a good scary. Now it's like a controlled scary. Okay, let's see if we can find a fun little path. I don't know if you can tell, this is like a relatively steep hill we're going up right now. It's just powering through, no problem. Oh, whoa, what the f Oh, hold on. Oh, that's a lot of, oh God, that's a lot of roots. I wasn't prepared for. Okay, mission abort, we're leaving. Okay, I think this was the path I was thinking of. Again, climbing a hill with no problem. Little rocks. Ugh. Okay, if you're thinking about this controller or you've built a 72 volt razor or some sort of bike like this, I would say this is uh, an upgrade worth doing literally right when you build the bike. Now, if you're on a somewhat tight budget, uh oh. Oh God. If you're on a somewhat tight budget, uh, I think the Amazon kit is awesome. Like I've never had more fun for the dollar amount. If you do have the extra 200, this is so worth it. And I hope this goes without saying, I, like I have no connection to Electro and Co whatsoever. They've been really cool when I've emailed them questions and stuff like that. But like, this isn't like a sponsored video or anything like that. Oh, what's going on down there? Okay, I think we might want to turn around. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Basically, 
Whoa, jeez. Hey there. Thank you. Appreciate it. But basically what I'm trying to say is uh, building this purely Amazon with that lower end controller, that'll get you so many laughs per dollar. This, I think, is so worth doing if you are looking to take it uh, on more ride outs and you want to learn wheelies and you get tired of uh, the power that the full Amazon kit produces. Oh, hi doggies. Here, I'll turn off the light. Thank you. Hi doggies. Okay, light back on. Let's do it. Oh my God, dude. Let's do this little hill climb here. Oh my God, no problem. It's wheeling up it. Holy shit, I'm losing steering at the front because it's, <laughs> it's so powerful. I guess all I'm trying to say is like, if you get the Amazon kit, you're gonna have so much fun. Once you have the Amazon kit and you go, you know what, I wanna be a little bit faster, I wanna have a little bit more mid-range, maybe some more usable torque, then this is like the best upgrade I think you could do. Oh, geez, it's just stupid fast, dude. As you know, I do not like riding in traffic. It freaks me out. I feel like I'm gonna die. I don't know, call me crazy. I'm just not a huge fan of traffic fatalities. But this will keep up with cars, no problem, dude. Last night, I was riding this around the neighborhood a little bit. I was racing cars left and right. They couldn't keep up. If I had to be completely honest, you know, I, I don't really think they knew we were racing. But either way, dude, this bike is crazy. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video. If you really liked the video, make sure to subscribe. I make a new video whenever I can. Thank you so much for spending your time watching this video, and I will see you next time. Peace.